Now at the 1984 Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist Terrell Biggs as he gets ready to make his way to the ring. Biggs, of course, four years ago was the star heavyweight in the Duva's main event stable when he fought against Mike Tyson in 1987 in Atlantic City. At that time, the Duvas still had Evander Holyfield fighting in the cruiserweight division. And shortly after his knockout loss to Tyson, the Duvas split from Terrell Biggs. They believed that he no longer had it to be a contender in the heavyweight division. So one of Biggs' motives here tonight is an entirely personal one to show his former employers that he is still the kind of fighter that they once believed he was. One of the unusual things about Biggs, Gill, is that he openly talks about the fact that he's gone from a, a headliner to an opponent. Well, yes, it certainly was unusual. He, he put himself in perspective. He said, I used to be the superstar. I was the guy that was building up. Now they're trying to use me to build up other guys. He said, but I think I, I, think I can still fight. There's Tyrell Biggs' record, as you can see. Since he was defeated by Mike Tyson, he's won five and lost four. And maybe the best argument he can make that he can still fight was that showing against Bo, because for much of the fight, he was competitive and looked better than he had in years, Gil. He certainly was, and at the one time in the fight, he had Bo in trouble, and it was the first time I saw him really set down on punches and really bang away, and that's what he says he's going to do tonight. All right, now here comes the man who knocked out Riddick Bo in Seoul, South Korea, for the Olympic gold medal in 1988. Lennox Lewis, he is Canadian and English, fighting out of England now, and this will only be his second appearance of an 18-fight career. Tonight, fight number 18 as he comes back to the USA. The question I have, Gil, is whether being an amateur, however successful for so long, could hurt him the way it might have hurt Biggs. That w whether that amateur attitude and style was so deeply ingrained that they never become real professional prize fighters. Well, you know, that is a very good point. And Larry, he brought over a very good amateur trainer by the name of John Davenport, but I stress the word amateur. And so whether or not that it would have been better for him to get a, a more professional guy like an Eddie Fudge, for example, it remains to be seen. But uh, certainly amateur boxing is different from professional boxing. Uh, we'll see tonight whether he's advancing the same way, for example, a Riddick Bowe has advanced. And the record for Lennox Lewis, 17 wins, no losses against an almost ludicrously weak list of opponents. 15 of the wins by knockout. And we take a look at the tail of the tape, and you will see that the two fighters are almost identical in size and frame, both in the range of 6'5", both around 230 pounds. So they will face each other as physical equals. And the last time they fought, incidentally, the one previous meeting between the two was in 1984 in Los Angeles. This, incidentally, is the first heavyweight fight between two heavyweight Olympic gold medalists since Foreman defeated Frazier on January 22, 1973. And again, we remind you, Lewis, the 1988 gold medalist, Biggs beat Lewis with a 5 nothing decision at Los Angeles en route to the gold medal in 1984. And here are our punch stat numbers to give you an idea of just how these fighters fight. Lewis, as you can see, a more accurate puncher. And as you can also see, although Biggs is well known for his jab, Lewis throws more jabs than he. This is a matchup of two power forwards who like to move in behind big jabs. Rules, and for that, we turn it over to our unofficial official scorer, Harold Letterman. Lennox Lewis and Terrell Biggs will fight tonight using the rules of the Georgia State Athletic Commission. Three judges scored a fight on a 10-point must system. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the last. And if Jim, and Jim, if the fight is stopped because of a cut produced by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after five rounds have been completed. Up until then, it's a technical draw. All right, Harold, thanks very much. Right now, let's go to the familiar face and voice of ring announcer Michael Buffer for pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Omni Arena here in one of America's greatest sports cities, Atlanta, Georgia, where tonight, Main Events Monitor Productions in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beer, Budweiser presents professional boxing for your entertainment. 
All the bouts tonight, ladies and gentlemen, are sanctioned by the Georgia State Athletic Boxing Commission. The three judges assigned to this first bout will be Erwin Deutsch, Bobby Ezor, and Frank Skillbred. And the third man in the ring for this contest is Frank Santor. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a special bout in the heavyweight division scheduled for 10 rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with black trim. He weighs an even 231 pounds. He is the 1984 Olympic gold medal champion in the super heavyweight division. And now as a professional, his record is 19 and four with 12 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tyrell, the TV And across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent wearing the red trunks with black trim, weighing in at 230 and one half pounds. He also is an Olympic gold medal champion in the super heavyweight division from 1988. He's undefeated now as a professional, 17 and 0, 15 by KO, ranked number three in the world by the WBA. Ladies and gentlemen, from East London, England, Lennox Lewis. Who know the instructions and address it. Remember to obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Protect yourselves at all times, guys. This trunk's a little high, aren't you? The main question as we go into this fight is whether Tyrell Biggs can muster the same kind of, kind of enthusiasm and energy as he had against Riddick Bo. If he does, he can make a very good fight out of it, perhaps even win it. Among heavyweight contenders, Lennox Lewis is ranked third by the WBA, fifth by the IBF, and sixth by the WBC. Terrell Biggs, after his loss to Bo, is no longer ranked in the top ten by any organization. Lewis comes out firing and lands a right hand to drive Bo into the ropes. Great, there you go. Make it Biggs, not Bo. You may be thinking of the future, Larry. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of something that might happen down the road. What's your head? What's your head? And Biggs looks a little soft around the middle to me. Doesn't look as sharply trained as was the case against Bo a couple of months ago. Biggs told us he only had two and a half or three weeks in which to get ready for this fight. And maybe Lewis senses that and has made a determined effort to come out of the blocks extremely fast. And now Biggs tries to get the jab going. And you know it's unusual for Stop, don't put that. the book on Lennox Lewis is that he's a very careful fighter. Works behind the jab and for him to move out of the blocks like that, uh, Jim, is uh, quite a surprise. He looks like he wants to get it over with in the first round. Clearly wants to make an impression on American viewers. And the American boxing writers seated at ringside. When Terrell Biggs can get the jab working, he is a very stylish looking heavyweight. Wild right hand just missed by Lewis. One of Big's biggest problems in the in the past was that he tried to punch and get out of the way at the same time. And it took all of the sting out of his punches. He said tonight that he's going to sit down on his punches and he finally realized that he has to hit you and hurt you when he fights you. It's not any amateur. Both men are landing the jab here. Biggs has not tried to follow with anything. Lewis is the one who is throwing big right hands over the top. Most of which have missed so far except for the one early connect that pushed Biggs into the ropes. But as you can see, Tyrell Biggs is fighting from a flat-footed stance, which is very, very unusual for him. None of the side-to-side -side movement, not on his toes. Lead left hook just missed for Lewis. Now two right hands land and another. And Biggs ties him up. Round one coming to a close. 
Lewis lands two more right hands. Big's in a little trouble, but the bell is going to sound. We spoke about the amateur attitude that might be ingrained in these fighters from their long amateur histories, but uh, right there, Lennox Lewis showed us some real professional attitude. And use your jam, okay? He certainly did, Larry. He came right out bombing. Stay, stay relaxed, okay? Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed, Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. Stay relaxed. There you see Lewis squaring off and trying to put some real hurt on Biggs. Same sequence, different angle. It's unusual for a British heavyweight of any kind to fight this way. Gil, we're usually used to seeing them wanting to lay back amateur or professional. Well, you know, I, I did mention the fact that John Davenport, an American trainer, is his trainer moved over from New Jersey but again John has worked mostly with amateur fighters but you can see that uh, Lennox Lewis looks like he certainly has advanced uh, quite a bit since well he was exceptionally days. aggressive in his last fight against former cruiserweight Glenn McCrory and he has come out firing again tonight Lewis once again pinning Biggs against the ropes with right hands and now Terrell pivots off the ropes and lands a couple body shots There's that trying to punch and get out of the way at the same time. You saw Biggs flick that left hand out. Didn't quite reach Lewis with the punch. There it is again. Short with the jab. Well, Larry talked about the amateur experience. Biggs was a great amateur where the payoff is for putting your glove on the target. In professional boxing, you should put your glove through the target. And it took him a long time to learn to even try that. Well, Jim, I think you should put your glove through the target, whether you're an amateur or a pro, because if you hit a guy with a stiff punch, you knock him off balance, and you can hit him with two or three more. There's a trickle of blood now from Terrell Biggs' mouth, spilling over the lower lip. Left hand was solid. If you saw Biggs Tyson in 1987, you know that Terrell gets a very pained expression on his face. Almost as though, as though he's about to weep when he's being badly beaten in the ring. Traces of that expression are already beginning to creep around the eyes of Terrell Biggs tonight. Lennox Lewis look, looks like much the stronger guy physically, Jim. Looks like he can handle uh, Tyrell on the inside. There was a solid jab from Biggs, and now he tries to follow up to the body and lands twice. And Lewis continues to step forward. That right hand did not connect. Great, there you go. Well, the crowd loved the effort. Uppercut is solid, and Terrell Biggs once again pinned against the ropes. And Biggs with a left to the body and a left over the top. Good stiff left hook by Tyro Biggs. And Jim, this is the first time I've ever seen him fight this way, completely flat-footed and really trying to bang away. That's what he told us he was going to do in the interview, and that's what he's doing. Ten seconds to go in round number two, and in the second half of this round, Biggs has started to come alive a little. And we remind you, coming up a little bit later in the evening, our live coverage of the heavyweight championship fight between that man, 29-year-old Evander Holyfield, in his hometown to take on the opponent of the week, Smokin' Burt Cooper. Once again, if you're not a boxing fan, the intention for Holyfield tonight had been to fight Francesco Damiani of Italy. He dropped out less than a week ago with a twisted ankle. Burt Cooper is the chosen opponent with less than a week's notice. And some people think that Cooper will be a lot more dangerous for Holyfield than Damiani would have been. Right. Jab, right hand. Hands up. Start stepping to him, okay? Stop.
Start stepping in here. Remember, back step in here with your dad, right hand behind you. Okay? Watch with that elbow. Let's go. Stay here. Stay here. Very often the, the difference in fights like these is you have one fighter on the way up who's never had his shot, still has a dream of being a champion. The other fighter is have his, has had his shot. Can the other fighter, meaning Biggs, really sustain his enthusiasm through a barrage of punches? Well, Larry, if in fact Biggs can land a couple of good solid punches, he can get that adrenaline flowing. But he can get discouraged a lot easier than a, than a Lennox Lewis can get discouraged in a fight. And right now in this round, he's already taken two discouraging right hands. That one just missed. But this is rapidly deteriorating toward target practice for Lennox Lewis. There's a good stiff jab. And another. And there's the right hand he was supposed to follow with. I like the way Lennox Lewis goes back down to the body with that left hook after he throws a combination to the head. One of the things for which Lewis has been criticized in the English press is an inability to put punches together. So he has been working on that. One thing I noticed with uh, Lennox Lewis, there's that left hook underneath again. One thing I noticed, he really doesn't faint as, as much as I think he should faint. He walks, he gets within punching range and snaps that jab right out. Sometimes it's good, you throw, faint a little bit, let the guy fall for the faint, then you nail him. Very little head movement for Lewis. Could be a problem later on, particularly for a guy who's 65 inches tall, and down goes Biggs from the solid right cross. That was a good, five, solid right hand right six, on the chin. Seven, eight. Terrell's going to get up Correct. at eight. Right. Here we are. Gets a little breather. He showed courage against Bo. And there's another right hand, and that might be it. Two, three, I think that Tyrell is starting four, to think that to himself, five, Jim, that that might, six, might be it. Not Sally's going to gonna make one more try. Eight. You okay? You want to go? No three knockdown rule in effect here. No three knockdown rule. So Terrell can go down again without automatically being out of the fight. Both knockdowns are on the right cross. Lewis throws another one. Biggs goes down again and the referee's seen enough. That's an impressive victory for Lennox Lewis. A good scout to have. And I'll, I'll go in the ring and find out where he's going from here. Okay, let's do that, Larry. <laughs> See if he's going to pick his next opponent by committee or who's going to pick the opponent. Well, you're right. He told us before that he was very enthusiastic about going ahead with top flight opponents, but that his business managers had to temper him. My interpretation of that was he wants to fight bums and they don't want him to fight anybody that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, but now he has the most credible name yet on his dossier of vanquished opponents. And for Biggs, whether he will listen or not, surely several people will advise him that this should have been the last time around. Well, you know, he was very, very impressive in this uh, performance, Jim. Come right out, look to get the guy out right away, search and destroy. That's what he was doing, and he did it. You know, one of his, uh, his hobbies is playing chess, Lennox Lewis. And I thought how appropriate for a guy who has a reputation as a boxer. But uh, he didn't play chess out here. He was playing search and destroy Nintendo. That's correct. All right, let's take a look at the two three knockdowns make it in round number two. There was the first solid right cross, as you said, Gil, right on the button. Terrell making the mistake of coming up with no glove in front of his face. Anytime you slip a punch, Jim, as you said, he should have come up throwing a left hook, even just to protect himself. But in instead, as you can see here, 
doesn't do a thing. Just stays there and bang right on the chin. Lewis looked like so much strong. He looks so much stronger. Here's the second of the three knockdowns. There's the wild left that Biggs threw in attempted retaliation. And clearly he was still groggy from the right cross that produced the first knockdown. Yeah, the second, the second knockdown was, was certainly was not a solid punch. You can see it just about caught him in, almost in the back of the neck. But you can see. And now we'll take a look at knockdown number three. They were against the ropes as Lewis tried to finish things off. The uppercut was vicious, and Biggs had had enough. He certainly did, and if you, you take a look, he looks really like he'd been batted badly in the three rounds. There's the uppercut that set up the final punch. So Terrell Biggs is waved off after the third knockdown. And Lennox Lewis has the 18th win of his career, the 16th by knockout. And we go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Santor stops this bout in the third round, enforcing the three knockdown rule. The official time, two minutes, 47 seconds of the third round. The winner by TKO victory, still undefeated, Lennox <laughs> Harold Letterman, a quick clarification. Weren't we under the impression that the three knockdown rule was not in effect here in Georgia? Jim, they went back and forth a couple of times. Uh, I spoke to the supervisor of officials who told me that uh, both sides have to agree, uh, otherwise the three knockdown rule is in effect. You know, they, they kept going back and forth and back and forth. Finally, I got the impression that the three knockdown rule was in effect, and I guess the referee thought that way and stopped the fight. All right. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Lennox. Were you determined here tonight to put on an impressive show and in particular to dispose of Biggs faster than uh, Riddick Bowe did? Yes, uh, definitely, because uh, I know that me and Riddick Bowe are going to be compared, and I definitely wanted to knock out Tyrell Biggs as fast and as soon as possible. This is what takes seven weeks in camp, and you know I took it out on Tyrell Biggs. You have been talking about making a, an adjustment to being a professional fighter. Would you say this was your most professional fight in the sense that you, in fact, were a destroyer out there tonight and, and not a boxer? Well, definitely. You know, I had to l learn to really take my time out there and look professional, go professional, and do my work professionally in a professional order. So you no longer feel that you have to sit back, box, take an advantage when something opens, but that you want to make your openings? I definitely want to make my openings. Lennox Lewis is on a mission, and Tyrell Biggs was a stepping stone for me. So I feel, I feel great, confident, and ready. Describe the mission for us. The mission is to be, to be the world heavyweight champion. And it, all I need is more, a couple more fights, and then I'll be in there against the champion. Can you give us any idea of what your program, your schedule would be, how you see 1992 unfolding for you, who you want to fight? Well, I just want to fight anybody that they put me in against because I have a lot of confidence in my own ability. Uh, my next fight is in February, February 1st. So, you know, that would be another progressive step that I'm going to be making. Thank you, and we will be watching your progress, Lennox Lewis. Thank you. Jim? All right, Larry, so Lennox Lewis takes another step toward big-time heavyweight.